Hello my peeps, it's Antoinette here. Today we are going to make the Ketogenic Woman's special easy keto cabbage rolls better than her Russian mother's. She has this on her website, the uh, ketogenicwoman.com. So it's Sunday and I have John over here putting a cabinet together for me. So uh, I thought I'd make him some keto comfort food. <laughs> The first thing we're going to do is lop off the end of the cabbage. This is a really big one. She calls for uh, one cabbage, a large cabbage, I imagine like this, uh, or two small cabbages. So I'm going to chop off the end and get it simmering in the pot. Okay, I'm starting to peel away the layers of the cabbage. You just take a fork and peel off one layer at a time and just keep on simmering till you get them all out. I'll be here for a while. <laughs> Here's my mound of cabbage. Now I made the mistake, I stuck a big knife in it I shouldn't have done that, um, but uh, <laughs> to be honest, I have never made cabbage rolls. This is the first time, so uh, it will be interesting. <laughs> now, John is already gone. Uh, the cabinet's done, it's in place, but it, it was uh, a bit of work, and I had to prepare the walls and such, so... Uh, it's now almost 4.30 in the afternoon and we're just getting started. But that there was the uh, most time consuming uh, part of this recipe, I imagine. <laughs> so the original recipe uh, made by uh, Anita's, the ketogenic woman, her grandmother called for tomato soup. Now, I wonder, let's see, it expires October 14th, 2020. I've had this, like, uh, for a long time. Uh, let's see how many carbs. Whew. 20 carbs, 12 sugars, and one dietary fiber for a half a cup. I will give this <laughs> to my daughter, because uh, we're going to make it the low carb way. For Anita's recipe, the ketogenic woman, she says to use a can of crushed tomatoes and maybe another can of tomato sauce. These are both exactly the same in carb count. It's four grams. Uh, this is per quarter cup. Four grams, one dietary fiber, and two natural sugars. They're both the same. In her recipe, she says that you want approximately four to five cups of the tomato sauce. This is a four cupper, but that's way down there. I imagine that I have at least four and a half cups uh, between the two cans. I'm also going to be adding uh, some diced green chilies, just for some more flavor. The key is adding your sweetener to make this taste like Campbell's soup. So, um, let's see, what does her recipe say? The recipe doesn't give you the actual amount of sweetener that you're going to put in there, so this is going to be to taste. Um, I'm going to sprinkle in a tablespoon of my Lakanto sweetener. Then you add any spices that you uh, wish. She suggests uh, adding oregano. I don't know that that's going to be enough sweetener, but I'm going to test it out. I'm using, this is salt free, 
the Kroger brand, the Zesty Original Blend. This has, uh, let's see, onions, spices, black pepper, parsley, celery, seed, basil, bay, marjoram, oregano, savory thyme, cayenne, coriander, cumin, mustard, and rosemary and garlic. So I think this will be really good in there. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of that. That should be quite flavorful. All right, then I have Sylvia's Soulful Seasoned Salt. So here's where I'm adding my salt. I'm going to use a little less of this. I'm going to put in a teaspoon. give it a taste and see if we need more sweetener. Let's give it a taste. I think we need another tablespoon of this sweetener. So, it's not sweet enough. it up in the pan. Here's my meat mixture. It's very good. All I did was fry it up with some salt and pepper, uh, but it's very flavorful. So I'm going to set this aside and uh, Anita's recipe didn't call for any rice, um, rice cauliflower. But I'm going to put that in there. This is uh, from Aldi's, the garlic and herb. So I'm going to cook this on the stove top as well. Uh, it says it should take about five minutes. Just uh, cook it until the uh, water evaporates. My cauliflower is cooked. And uh, it only took five minutes, just like the package said. And uh, I did do it from frozen. So now I'm going to add this uh, to my meat mixture. In it goes. Hopefully, uh, I'll have enough sauce. If not, there's always more. Continuing on with her recipe, she says to add one egg, add that in, that's a nice beautiful egg there, and uh, the garlic, um, she says one tablespoon of minced garlic. This is the Aldi's. Now I already have garlic in my, uh, in the cauliflower, so I don't want to overdo it. All right, I'm gonna level that one off. Let's see. I'm adding the green chilies. That's not on the recipe. I really 
uh, used quite a bit of salt and pepper when I seasoned the, the meat. So I'm not going to add any more here. I think I'm good on that. Uh, then a handful of parsley. She says chopped parsley. Well, I've got the flakes from Costco. A handful. Okay. This is going to have a lot of flavor. The way that Anita served it, because she grew up with this, just without any rice in it, anyway. I mean, that's how she was raised. The Russian style didn't have rice in the cabbage rolls. So uh, that's what she grew up on. And um, But what she served it with was cauliflower mash. So she would uh, serve the cabbage roll on a bed of her cauliflower mash. And uh, for that recipe, uh, you would need to go visit ketogenicwoman.com. This looks fabulous. That looks like cabbage roll filling. I may not have made cabbage rolls, but I have eaten a lot of them, They're, and I love them. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> Wonderful. It appears that this uh, is going to make quite a bit. And um, Anita says that she usually fills two 9 by 13 pans. I'm going to start with one because I did hack up that cabbage with the uh, that knife uh, poke. And so um, a lot of it's not exactly intact. So we'll see how far it can go. But you take a half a cup and pour it. Uh, in the bottom of the pan. I think I'm going to need to brush this out. Okay, just grab a brush. Bottom of the pan. First time we're using this pan. This was, uh, it's the Pioneer Woman Christmas present for my nephew and niece. Okay, the sauce is good. Now we're going to set this aside and start rolling. All right. <laughs> here we go. All right, I got a piece of cabbage here. Not exactly perfect, but. You're going to want to take uh, two to three tablespoons per cabbage roll and roll it on in there. So I'm just going to start scooping. Put in two of these. And then you roll it up. I think the scissors would be helpful here because I like presentation. I know I have to cut off a portion of this. All right, I'm gonna roll it up here. I'm gonna move my sauce because it doesn't need to be here right now. There is a learning curve to this. <laughs> okay, let's see. Roll it up this way. I may have too much in there. Oh my gosh. Anita, this is a project. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna roll it like this. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna roll it up and trim off the excess. Then she says to put seam side down in the pan. I think I'm looking for two and a half scoops would be the perfect amount. I'm gonna continue on this process and when I have a pan together, uh, that's when I'll be right back. We're almost there. I tell you though that um, 
Uh, you get a rhythm for this, so it's not as bad as you might think. So, uh, yeah, it, it gets easier and easier. And uh, I've learned a couple of tricks, which I can't really tell you. It's, it's what you're going to have to learn when you make, roll them up. So, uh, basically, I think I like going, uh, flipping over from the sides first and then rolling that way. I did it both ways. <laughs> so, um, next, what you do with this leftover cabbage is you can just um, sprinkle some of it on top. And that's what we're going to do here. My second pan wasn't quite full. But that's because I had some really fat guys in here. Yeah. Well, I like it fat. So. Or thick. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm just going to spread it all over the place. Now we're just going to pour the sauce on over the top. And uh, let me save some for that one. All right, I have plenty of sauce. So we're just gonna pour the sauce on. I'm gonna spread it out with my brush. Or a spoon, it doesn't matter. This is very forgiving. It's gonna be fabulous. I'm going to be eating this all week. <laughs> uh, well, we're having a, on Friday, we're having a chili cook-off. So, uh, I'm bringing in a keto chili. We'll see. It's going to be fun. I'll probably start making it Wednesday night. So, alright. That looks great. Get the other pan. We're going to cook this at 375 for only 15 minutes. Then we're going to lower it to 325 and cook it for two hours. Now you could do this in the instant pot, make it quick and easy, uh, but uh, this is the way that Anita does it and um, that's how her grandmother did it. And I'm sure that it's better with that long cooking time, low and slow. I've always been a fan of low and slow. All right. Now I can take a break. <laughs> Might have to do some dishes. That's what it looks like right now going in the oven. And into the oven they go. Okay. We'll see you in two hours. Oh! We really are cooking it low and slow. No, we're cooking it at 300 for two hours after 15 minutes at 375. I forgot one important step. You're supposed to cover this with foil. So it's been 15 minutes. I lowered the oven to 300 degrees. So I'm going to cover it with foil and get it back in the oven. It's out of the oven. And uh, it's actually been sitting now for like a half an hour because I've been editing this video. Uh, so. Oh. It's beautiful. Mm. I'm going to plate it up. Look at it. Mm, I can hardly wait to taste it. Alright, here we go. It's so fork tender. It's still 
like semen. This is so good. Mm. It's worth the work. And I have food for all week. I'm going to have to bring some to work uh, tomorrow for Cassandra, uh, my co worker who has. Uh, she started keto um, December 14th, before Christmas. She's lost 14 pounds. So I'm very proud of her. And, uh, yeah. It's delicious. Thanks for coming by for another video, my peeps. We'll see you next time. We will see you for the weigh-in on Wednesday. And then later in the week will be the... Uh, the chili for the chili cook-off. We'll see you then.